Tonight we are turning our attention to the Weldon Group in southern England, specifically the Wessex Formation, a site rich with early Cretaceous fossils. Now this area has garnered recent attention due to the discovery of a new genus of Ankylosaur. The Wessex Formation also presents fascinating geological features that appear to indicate rapid burial events. This revelation not only contributes to our knowledge of early Cretaceous fauna, but also raises critical questions about the conditions that led to the preservation of these fossils. To discuss the findings and their implications, we are pleased to welcome Joseph Hubbard from Creation Research Worldwide. Joe, it's a pleasure to have you on here. It's great to see you again, David. It's great to be on this uh, new report, and yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Listen, you, you're helping us unpack some of these developments from the broader significance of this, of this formation. Uh, you've done a tremendous amount of research. You have worked as a zoo director. You have done geological research. You have collected fossils from around the world. Uh, on the cutting edge of much of this research where we're finding uh, original biomolecules in different dinosaur bones. But uh, I just really appreciate what you do for your field work. And I wanted you to maybe start by giving us some background information on the Wessex Formation and why it's significant based on what we believe looking at biblical history. Sure. So it's, it's significant for two main reasons. Uh, first reason is because, well, it was where some of the first dinosaurs were really studied, right? So the Wessex Formation is part of a much greater sequence known as the Weldon Flood Basin. We'll come on to the flood bit in a moment. But the Welds throughout the Weldon Deposit, the Weldon Basin throughout most of the south of the UK, um, in uh, 1825, Gideon Mantell found the first Iguanodon dinosaur bone, which he described described in central England from the Weld. Uh, in 1829, William Buckland described an, another iguanodon bone from the Isle of Wight, the same place where this uh, dinosaur, this new, new report comes from. Uh, and then later on, of course, in 1841, Richard Owen, Sir Richard Owen, founder of the Natural History Museum in London, coined the term um, dinosaur uh, and he among with several others Gideon Mantell William Buckland and another guy called William Fox the Reverend William Fox who has more dinosaurs named after him than any other person right they would go down and search along the coastline of the Isle of Wight looking for dragon bones and yes dragon bones was the name that they actually used right so it's significant for a historical point of view from dinosaurs but I've got my book here, uh, English Weld and Fossils, which is a, a fairly significant book uh, talking uh, about the geology of it. And one of the things that it says is it talks about the Weldon group being called the Weldon Flood Basin. And it describes the formation of the Weld, including the stuff that's in the Isle of Wight, where this dinosaur was found. It describes it as being a large flood basin. Now, as you mentioned, I've collected up and down the coast of, well, not just the Isle of Wight, but also uh, Hastings, uh, of course, famous for the Great Battle, right, in 1066. But it's also a really good location for dinosaur fossils because the Weld is there as well. In fact, it's not just the Weld, it's the Wessex Formation there as well. So, so I've collected up and down down the south coast over to the Isle of Wight. And one thing that you can tell, and it's an argument which I've used in, in many debates as well, right? When I was going through geology, uh, undergraduate ge geology, I was taught that you recognize and understand the geology of an area based on the fossils that's inside of it. So it's if it's it all you know terrestrial fossils, dinosaurs and palm trees and conifer trees or whatever, then it's a you know, tropical terrestrial environment. If it's all shallow marine, then it's a shallow marine environment. If it's all deep marine, it's a deep marine environment. But the point that we make in debates based off of the field work that we do, and we love taking people out and doing field trips and showing them the real evidence, when you actually get out there and look at the fossils and look at the geology, it's a mess. Because you see all down along the 
dinosaur coasters is called of the Isle of Wight, where the Wessex formation is, where the weld is, where this new dinosaur was found. Um, well, if you go down there, you can certainly find dinosaurs and you can certainly find pine cones and cycad uh, plants and, and, and cones. You can find great big trees that are buried in the Wessex formation with dinosaur footprints and all this abundant, you know, terrestrial or tropical type environment. But you find it buried next to bivalve shells things like giant oyster shells you go out to the main deposit uh, which is right out at low tide and then there's a fossil forest it's actually marked on our old maps the problem is when you go out there it doesn't look very much like a forest because all of the trees have been ripped up They've had their branches stripped. They've had their roots torn off. Some of them are buried in an upright position, but most of them are buried in a log jam. And the ones that are upright, you know, didn't live there, die there and get buried there because they've been ripped up. And they've been buried next to dinosaur footprints. They've been buried next to drowned dinosaurs for sure, because you see the largest and most complete dinosaur on the island, which is now on display in the Dinosaur Isle Museum by a place called Yaviland, where the first ever dinosaur on the island was found, right? It is a drowned dinosaur. Its head is thrown back, its tail's in the air, legs are squashed up underneath. It's been well reported now that this kind of pose is the result of a dinosaur drowning. So this very deposit where the Ankylosaurus was, you've got very good evidence of a flood deposit, both from the ripped up trees, mixed environments, land plants and sea creatures, right? And even the drowned dinosaurs all point towards the Cretaceous weld being a flood environment. So you've got these dinosaurs in a death pose. You've got it yep. known as a flood basin. You have many different types of creatures and plants mixed together, stripped of leaves as if there was something very catastrophic that took place here. And then you've got all of these dinosaurs that are being found, not just in Calosaurus, but uh, iguanodon bones and other things uh, that are actually very well preserved. Can you tell me about some well preserved dinosaur bones? Sure. And, and just to add on to the to the back of that as well, the Isle of Wight is the sixth best place in the world for diversity of dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. So there's an enormous abundance of dinosaurs just from uh, the weld, right, just from the Wessex formation, uh, for instance, on the Isle of Wight. And you need to take a step back and get a bigger perspective because, well, the Cretaceous deposits that these dinosaurs are found in, they go all around the world, right? So you really are dealing with not just a, a local flood, but with a worldwide flood. In terms of the preservation, what's interesting is that um, if you get to right the back of this report about this Ankylosaurus, right, um, it, one of the things that it says is it says it's related to the uh, Polacanthus, the other Ankylosauri type dinosaurs uh, in the Weldon group, but the problem is, is, is that it's six to eight million years older. Well, just five months after this paper was originally published, another group from uh, the University of Portsmouth, uh, led by Professor Andy Gale, he published some evidence based on old radiometric dating, right, uranium to lead dating, that the uh, Wessex formation was actually six to eight years, million years rather, uh, older than previously believed. So it does kind of show you that the dating is a little bit arbitrary there, but it's interesting because this new evidence apparently dates the Wessex formation to be around 123 million years old, give or minus 3 million years. Now, that's significant when it comes to the question of the quality of preservation, because I have a dinosaur bone here, right, from the Wessex Formation um, on the Isle of Wight. It's actually one of the big giant uh, iguanodon vertebrae backbones right now it's worn down a little bit you can see where the big sort of spine would come up here and they'd all sort of be stacked together um you find evidence of drowning because it's actually buried next to wood and shells but the really interesting thing is this hole that you can see just in the middle there now that hole is there because i put it there right now i'm going to put that down because that's quite heavy but you see the subject uh, of my academic research for the last sort of two to three years now has been about analyzing dinosaur bones 
for soft tissue. Soft tissue, by the way, we're referring to not just the preservation of soft material like skin and so on and so forth, but actually the entrapped presence of what we call original biomolecules or biomaterials. So we're talking about things like collagen, okay, soft squidgy proteins. We're talking about things like blood cells. And they're not just preserved as in they haven't turned to stone, but they're actually trapped within the fossil. Now that's quite important because you see when it comes to fossils like this, many people think that they've turned to stone but they actually haven't, they've become permineralized, literally permeated with minerals. So the original bone is here, uh, it's fully entrapped and encased and permeated with minerals. And so when we drill a hole, we collect what comes out and what comes out is a mixture of material from the bone. So original bone material and anything that's organic left in it, as well as all the minerals that have permeated the bone. Now we do two things. First of all, we demineralize it. So we basically dissolve the minerals. We're then left with a solution that contains the bone, dust in it, and anything organic. We then denature and digest the bone. So we're basically getting rid of all the inorganic part of the bone, right? Your, you know, calcium and so on and so forth. And we're left with a solution that if there's anything organic left in the bone, any original biomaterials, then that will be in that solution. We run it through things like mass spectrometers, right? Various different techniques. And we look for the results. And what we found, and by the way, you can see some of these reports on our website, creationresearch.net. Uh, what we found is that bones like this are full of collagen. Bones like this are full of blood cells. Now, collagen is interesting because collagen has a shelf life. It's well recognized in the medical sciences. And the shelf life says that there should be no collagen left in this bone if the bone is any older than a few thousand years. Now, some critics and some experts in ancient collagen, like Buckley from Manchester University, he would argue that you've actually got up to a million years. But he says, and the exact quote is, there is less than 1% chance of less than 1% uh, percent of collagen being left in less than 1 million years. Wow. In other words, by the time you hit a million years, it's gone. You've got no ability, no matter how well preserved it is, even under an optimal burial environment, you've got no chance of there being collagen left in this bone. Absolutely. And yet this is a bone from the Wessex Formation, supposedly 123 million years old, and it's full of collagen. And Everything it's not just full of collagen, finding... it's full of is pointing us to the idea that these things are much, much younger than previously suggested, yeah. and that all science is pointing back to a biblical reckoning that there was a catastrophic flood. Joseph Hubbard, we're out of time. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're gonna to have to have you back. Sure thing, we'll see you next time. And that is it for today. I wanna to thank you for joining us on the Genesis Science Report. Until next time, keep looking up. I'm David Reeves, truly the heavens declare the glory of God.